All right, so day number two at Clarks Hill. After day one, I was sitting in 88th place. Kind of underestimated what was going on out there, made some bad choices, didn't really uh, know the true quality of the fish that were in Clarks Hill, which was my fault. Kind of dropped the ball, didn't get enough bites in practice from largemouth to really let me know what was going on, that they were going to be such a huge player. So kind of my fault. Bummer, but um, I was able to make a little comeback. So day one, I had 10 pounds, 12 ounces. Day two, I had 16 something, um, which pushed me way up the standings. I went, like I said, I went from 88th to uh, 44th. So I made that 50 cut. That was huge for the tournament. Um, I really wanted to make sure I got into that cut. That way I had made some, some more points. You come in the top 50, you get a check. So it's the difference between 50 and 51 is Either you make at least eight grand or you make zero dollars and you lose your everything. You have five thousand dollar entry fee, we got um, all the expenses to get there. So there's, there's a lot. So it's a big difference between this 50 and 51st, but making it in there, the points are what are really going to carry me this year, and that's what I really need to keep focusing on. So I've had two good events so far now, um, and it has me sitting in 14th. So that's good, good news. Um, if you watch day three, I go over exactly how I caught all those fish that day. Day one, same thing. Um, but we're going to talk about day two. And this is where I really started to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, day one, I tried running a lot of spotted bass stuff. Day two, um, started off actually pretty slow. I started a Z-Man diesel minnow, the four inch, um, over a drain. I caught a two pound spot and like a little short keeper one. Like, I don't know what it was, pound, pound and a quarter, whatever. I ended up weighing and I had them in the live well early. And from there, I went and started fishing a bunch of things that I did the day before. I was just trying to fill out a limit, and it actually wasn't really working. But I had marked this willow tree that I wanted to go fish as I was running from one spot to the next. So after I got some pictures, uh, Charles Walter, one of uh, the MLF photographers, was there. He took some pictures. I was going, I go, I'm going back over there. I want to go check this out. And he goes, all right, I got to go shoot somebody else. So he... Uh, Missed out on what was about to happen. I took a crankbait um, and I caught a two and a half pound spot. And all of a sudden you're gonna see these loons. They started diving all over the place. The um, Them, the seagulls, they were going crazy. They were eating those blueback herring that are in Clarks Hill. And I took that little four inch uh, diesel minnow, I was crawling it along. I was throwing it on a favorite rod, it's a 721 medium heavy hex. Um, I also threw the Zinker Z on it, but that was, important because it had enough backbone when I hit this fish I honestly thought I might have hooked a loon and I was like oh boy it's gonna be kind of a mess coming on here but it didn't it was a uh, came walking out of the water big old bucket mouth it was like a four and a quarter pounder its mouth was giant it swallowed that diesel minnow and when I got that fish into the boat that was huge for the tournament um that was the turning point where I was like man I can do this. Like I, I can make that 50 cut. I can really start just going after them, really trying to catch these fish and work my way up. So from there, I went and fished down this other little clay point. I went my way out to this long tapering clay point, didn't get anything. I was like, man, I need to go back there. I gotta go check it one more time. So I went back in there, checked it again. That's why I started dragging this uh, Buckeye Lures uh, mop jig. So you can see this guy right here. It's got all those big floppy uh, living rubber. And I started dragging this around on my favorite rods, a 761 um, hex again, heavy action rod. So when I set that hook on them, I could really get those fish moving, pull them away. And I threw this right onto that same spot where those birds had been diving. At this point, they had moved off. The bait really wasn't there anymore, but I was dragging this mop jig. All of a sudden, I feel like just two little like crunches on it where he sucks it in and then he crunches it. I set the hook on this fish. And it did not want to come up off the bottom. And as soon as that happened, I was like, I know what this is. It's spotted bass, which is funny because like the spots, they're aggressive. They hit hard. They kind of act like a smallmouth, but they do not jump hardly ever. And that largemouth I caught on that uh, diesel minnow and my spinner rod came right out of the water. So this guy, he was probably about six, seven, eight foot of water, eats the mop jig um, and stays down i fought him for a while you'll see him come up and i got him into the boat uh it was 314 so almost a four pound spot which on clark's hill as far as i'm concerned giant i hadn't seen any other ones like that at this point i had a four pound largemouth a four pound spot 
the two of those really just kind of kicked me off, really pushed me up over the top to really get moving. From there, um, I went around. And I was like, I got a feeling that there's more fish pushing up shallow. I talked to a couple of my roommates, Jared McMillan and Eric Panzeroni. Um, they were saying they had seen some up shallow on day one at the end of the day. So I went and started skipping this wacky rig around. Um, this is a Zinker Z from Z-Man. The hook is a WRM. It's a 929-10 hook. It's actually a trailer hook, but it makes a great little Nico or um, wacky rig hook too. So I skipped this up again. I was just throwing it down pockets. I was trying to put it in front of as many fish as I could. And I put it actually in front of a uh, little stick that was in the water and I caught a three pounder. So I called out a little guy. Um, so I had a four pounder, a three pounder, and couple other that's I guess the two and a half pound spot and another guy um I kept fishing hard put another couple of two pounders in the water um I was fishing through this one area this one pocket I reeled down set the hook on it and man it was a big one <laughs> when I tell you it was big it was giant and I was fighting it fighting it and it just it togged me it was on my spinning rod pulled me into a bunch of willows and swam me through there and as it was doing this I knew I couldn't pull it and turn it around to get it out. I'm telling you, this fish was five, six, seven pounds. It was giant. I saw it. It was in this much water. So I couldn't get my troll monitor up over that spot to really um, get in there and get them. But I opted to actually flip my bail open and let him swim out of there or her swim out of there. And I was hoping that was going to happen. And eventually she actually stopped on this one branch and put her nose on it. It was kind of catching her breath. And at that point, I was driving up there, trying to get my trolling motor shallow enough, which I couldn't get shallow enough. I was reaching as far as I could with the net, and I touched the water, and it kind of freaked out and took off. Um, you'll see all that in the video here. But broke it off. Watch day three. There's a little redemption. I'm telling you, go back and watch it. It was kind of epic, so you want to see that. <laughs> um, how I started day three morning off, because I went back to that same spot. And I'm not going to say I caught her. But I'm pretty sure I called her boyfriend, and he was big. <laughs> um, just give you that little tease. So after that, um, I kept fishing hard. We I had a long day, so early. I was boat, I don't know, early 14 or something on day one. So I was in the first flight. Last day, uh, or second day, I was in one of the last uh, last boats. So boat, uh, flight, I don't know, what is seven, maybe something like that. It was doing it at 4.30. I was the last one of the last boats to come in, so... I was fishing through an area that I was dragging this mop jig on day one, and I had a big one chase it up when I reeled it in. So I went through there again, and on my Lowrance active target, I could see this two fish floating out there in the middle of this creek channel. So I threw my uh, Z-Man zinker here, threw that wacky over, let it fall down. Didn't actually heat it, so I hopped it back up, and as it was falling back down again, it would set the hook on it, three pounder. 15 minutes left of the day and honestly at this point before that I thought I had enough weight to um, make the cut well I evidently didn't um, I would have actually been a little bit shy I would have made in like that like probably 55 range so this one bumped me up probably another half pound got me into the cut I was sitting in 44th going into the day three um, what I had figured out was there was a little bit of a junk fishing deal going on there was also some uh just other just tougher fishing like where that they were moving from being pre-spawned to like uh, spawn and i caught a couple of spawned out ones so it was just an interesting uh tournament in general there's a lot changing throughout it um practice i was using this bill lewis scope stick too to identify some areas that had fish in it i was pulling them up off the bottom with or out of the brush or off the bottom with it um you could really see a bunch of them so so that's worth taking a look at as you keep fishing this spring you got a lot of pre-spawners in your area um, but if you're interested in checking out day three that's already posted day number one will be posted soon um, if you're watching this right away if you're waiting to watch it um, in the future it'll all three of them will be up I was just placing these one in reverse order because I had 18 pounds day one 16 something on day two and I had 10 something on day one so um, happy with it Good start to the uh, season here. I have a 18th place finish at Clarks Hill, where we're talking about. I had a 38th at Okeechobee, so right now I think I'm sitting in like 14th for the Angular of the Year standings. Need to make that top eight, make that best pro tour. That's the goal of the year. Um, so we're going to keep grinding. 
We'll talk to you again soon. If you have any questions, comments, um, want to know anything else about the lake, put them in the comments below. Um, if you could share with your friends, that's awesome. If you want to get any favorite rods, use the code GB20. It'll save you 20% off at favorite or favoriteusa.com. Rods, reels, anything they got on there, they'll hook you up. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. All right, we're going out day two here. Clarks Hill, first day, only at 10, 12. So a little bit of a tough day. We need to pick that up. Um, I caught fish doing a little bit of everything, drop shot and caught one on a wacky rig. Um, so we really just need to make up that weight, try to get into the top 50. I think I need about 15 pounds. So it's doable. They got to live in here. So we'll see what happens. scared I hooked a loon at first. <laughs>
sides. Look at that. That's a magnum spot. Big old spotted bass on that mop jig. Look at that. Yes. Look at that right there. Mop jig. Get me a big one. We gotta get more of these. Yes. That's number five. Three fourteen. It's a big old spotted bass. Big old spotted bass. Gives us five for thirteen pounds. Keep it going. Another mop jig bite. Not a giant, but he'll call.
two six. That helps. Straight out spot for a large mouth like that. That puts us at it says 14.6. It was a little heavy yesterday, so we'll see where we're at after this. But hopefully that gives us 14 pounds. We need one more like three pounder. And I think we'd get to go fishing again tomorrow. And that's that's what we're looking for. He's gonna help. He's a thin little thing. Same size, 114. This will beam him real quick. We got a new number four.
go. Another large mouth for a spot.